a Trump appointed judge has ruled that Starbucks is entitled to see Workers United's communications with journalists in a case against Starbucks. Last week in Southern Labor, which is a segment that we do every week, mostly where we tell you what happened in the labor movement in the South in the last week. We pull the information from Jonah Furman's newsletter, Who Gets the Bird, which compiles all of this information for the entire United States. So if you want to see what's going on outside the South, then you should subscribe to his newsletter. That is whogetsthebird.substack.com. With that, let's jump into new organizing for the weeks of October 23rd through November 6th. We had 91 workers at Florida City Gas and Power and Light in Miami who are organizing with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW. 75 contracted custodians at the Atlanta airport are unionizing with Workers United. The Communication Workers of America Local 1400, a.k.a. the Alphabet Workers Union, are organizing 58 YouTube music employees in Austin, Texas, who are subcontracted under a joint employer standard. Twelve staffers at the nonprofit Center for Rural Affairs in D.C. are joining an independent union. In wins and losses, we had 45 drivers for the Aramark Uniform Company in Houston, Texas, vote 31 to 0 unanimously to join Teamsters Local 988. Way to go, Houston Teamsters. 22 barge and tugboat workers for the Morin Towing Company in Savannah, Georgia, voted against joining the Masters, Mates, and Pilots Union 6 to 16. In three separate votes, the Independent Restaurant Workers United lost two, but won one. At Austin, Texas, pizza chain Via 313. Of the 92 eligible voters, 21 voted for the union and 32 voted against. In two votes among 248 workers for PepsiCo in Medley, Florida, 166 drivers dropped the steelworkers, local 7609, 56 to 70, while 82 production and warehouse workers stuck with the union, 57 to 22. Workers at Pizza Lupo in Louisville, Kentucky, won voluntary recognition with the Independent Restaurant Workers United. And an analysis at NBC News shows that the pattern of companies illegally shutting down to evade unions is real. And we should all take it existentially seriously for this new organizing wavelet. In strikes and bargaining updates, 6,000 members of the Brotherhood of Railroad Signalmen voted down their agreement, joining the Brotherhood of Maintenance and Way employees in rejecting the latest deal and preparing to strike. 5,000 members of Machinists District Lodge 19 narrowly voted to ratify their deal. 52% voted yes, with 59% turnout. Just a reminder, only one union needs to strike for all of them to strike and shut down the country's rail infrastructure. Two unions representing educators in Shelby County, Tennessee, are at odds over whether or not to move towards renegotiating a long-expired contract. Love to see that. (laughs) Elsewhere in transit, drivers in Greensboro, North Carolina, walked off for a day due to to a so-called misunderstanding about changes to their health care coverage that appear to have been soothed enough to resume operations. In Louisville, Kentucky, after getting quite close to an illegal strike, the Amalgamated Transit Union Local 1447 reached a tentative agreement with the local transit authority. Journalists at the Fort Worth, Texas Star-Telegram have launched a strike fund The Airline Pilots Association pilots at Delta have authorized a strike. The Airline Pilots Association pilots at United rejected a tentative agreement. And the Allied Pilots Association pilots at American Airlines rejected a deal before even sending it to the membership. Lots of pilot stuff happening last week. Machinists, customer service agents at Southwest Airlines, however, had a little bit better luck 
with a tentative agreement for their 8,000 members after they rejected the last one. So we'll see what the members say about it. In, Louis in Louisiana, Mississippi, Kentucky, and Virginia, Communications of uh, Workers of America call center workers for federal contractor Maximus struck for one day, but that day was an important one. It was the first day of open enrollment for the ACA, which is an obviously heavy traffic day for these call centers. In politics and legislation, Tennessee voted 70% to enshrine the open shop so-called right-to-work law in the state constitution. In better news, Illinois adopted a basically a reversal of that amendment and enshrined the right to organize. So yes. um, at least our, our Yankee friends up in <laughs> Illinois did something positive for yep. sure. The NLRB wants to repeal a Trump-era rule that made it harder for unions to block decertification votes. And in a jaw-dropping ruling, a far-right Trump-appointed judge has ruled that Starbucks is entitled to see Workers United's communications with journalists as part of discovery in a case against Starbucks. Amazing how broken labor law is in this country. Seriously. In internal union politics for labor notes, Jonah wrote about the nascent reform efforts in the massive uh, UFCW and the showdown that could ensue at the 2023 convention and beyond. In the shadow of a massive merger that could rock the union, there are new Teamsters for a Democratic Union and Unite All Workers for Democracy inspired efforts to switch to di direct elections for top officers, massively invest in coordinated bargaining and new organizing, and form a rank-and-file caucus. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Sean Fain of the Members United opposition slate in the UAW direct elections spoke to Bloomberg about their campaign to unseat the forever incumbent administration caucus from national leadership in that union. Meanwhile, the election monitor found that at least one incumbent inappropriately retaliated against the opposition challenger. The vote count is at the end of this month, and as of today, only 83,000 votes, less than 9% of those mailed, had been received per the election monitor's website. In a five-way race for the presidency, it seems likely that at least that top spot, and maybe some of the VPs where eight members are running for three spots, will see a runoff in early 2023. Jonah also wrote about his third Teamsters for a Democratic Union convention. You can read a write-up from In These Times on that. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.